Hey, what's going on everybody? It's your bro, hope you're doing well. And in this video, I'm going to show you all how we can sort iterables in Python. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. If you find this video helpful, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Your support will help keep this channel running. Well, 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 welcome back everybody. In this video, I'm going to show you all how we can sort data using Python. We'll begin with the sort method, which is used with lists, and the sort function, which is used with iterables, and that would include lists. Let's start with something very basic, and then we'll crank up the difficulty one step at a time. I have a list named students, and I have a bunch of student names within this list. We have Squidward, Sandy, Patrick, SpongeBob, and Mr. Krabs. Let's say that all of these students are taking a college course, perhaps on marine biology. What I would like to do is to sort this list in alphabetical order, and to do that, we have a method that is built in with lists. So type the name of your list, students, dot, sort. And it's easy as that. And to display this list, I think I'll use a for loop. For i in students, print i. And there you go. That's how to sort a list. Starting with the top, we have Mr. Krabs, then Patrick, Sandy, SpongeBob, and Squidward. The sort method of lists can accept keyword arguments. There are two optional keyword arguments that we can pass in. We can pass in key and or reverse. We'll cover key a little bit later. If we set reverse to true, then our list will be sorted by reverse alphabetical order, beginning with Squidward, SpongeBob, Sandy, Patrick, then Mr. Krabs. Now, the sort method does not work with other iterables. It's a built-in method for lists. If our list of students was instead, let's say, a tuple, well then the sort method is not going to work. You can see here that we have an attribute error. Tuple object has no attribute of sort. That's where the sort function would come in because that's useful for other iterables. You can also use this for a list too, I suppose. The sort function will return a sorted list. So let's use the sort function this time and we'll assign the result to a list called sorted students equals sorted and then we need to pass in an iterable and we have the option of passing in a key and or reverse the iterable that we'll pass in as an argument is our tuple named students so this line will be sorted students equals sorted students sorted students is a list the sorted function will return a list but it accepts an iterable as an argument and to display this we should change for i in students to for i in sorted students. And now this function will accept our iterable, our tuple, and create a sorted list. And all of these are in alphabetical order. And to reverse this, we can pass in the keyword argument of reverse equals true. And now our list is sorted in reverse alphabetical order. All right, we're gonna take it up a level. Welcome to level two. Sometimes data isn't always as simple. Here we have a list of tuples. Each tuple has a corresponding student record. We have a name, a letter grade for their college course, and the student's age. Now, how can we sort this list of tuples by either the student's name, their grade, or their age? Well, that's where the key keyword argument is going to come in with sorting. If you take a look at this list of tuples, it somewhat resembles a spreadsheet. There's rows, and then there's columns. The first column corresponds to student names. The second column are grades and the third column are all the ages of the students. So by default, sorting by the first column is actually really easy, that's the default. So if we need to sort alphabetically, that would be the same process as before. We would type the name of the list, students, dot, sort. But if we were to print this iterable for i in students, instead of just the individual student names, we're going to get each tuple that we have so now all of these tuples are arranged in alphabetical order, starting with the first column that we have, which are all the student names. Now, how can we sort these iterables by their second column? For this case, it would be student grades, or even the third column, which would be the student ages. Well, that's where the key keyword argument is going to come in. This is a keyword argument, and we set key equal to a function that's going to return the index of that specific column that we have. So let's say key equals grade. Grade is going to be a function object. Grade equals, and we can easily use a lambda expression for this. Lambda, let's say grades, colon, grades, and we will set an index of one. 
Now the first index is zero. That's the first column because computers always start with zero. Column two would have an index of one and then column three would have an index of two. So grid equals lambda grids colon grids index one. You can also rename these if you want. So students dot sort, we're setting the key equal to grid and grid is a function object via a lambda function. And now all of these students will be sorted by their grades, starting with Sandy, then SpongeBob, Mr. Krabs, Patrick, then Squidward. If this needs to be in reverse order, we can pass in that other keyword argument of reverse equals true. And for practice, if you wanted to sort all of this data by each student's age, then we would change grade to, let's say, age. Age equals lambda. We'll change grades to maybe ages, colon, ages. And the index would then be 2, because the first column here is 0, then 1, then 2, and change key to our function object of age. Now each student is sorted numerically, beginning with the smallest age, or the youngest person, starting with SpongeBob, Sandy Patrick Squidward, then Mr. Krabs. And like I said before, if you want your data arranged in reverse order, you can set that keyword argument of reverse to true within the sort method. And all of our student data is sorted beginning with the eldest student, which is Mr. Krabs, then Squidward, Patrick, Sandy, and then SpongeBob. And for the last part of this video, let's say that we're working with some other iterable. Let's say we have a tuple of tuples instead. Well, we can no longer use this sort method because that only belongs to lists. You can also use the sort function with lists and it will generate a new sorted list without changing the placement of the original. So let's say we have a tuple of tuples and this will create a new sorted list. Let's call this list sorted students equals, then we'll use the sorted function. We need to pass in an iterable and we can pass in both a key and or the reverse keyword argument. So the iterable would be students and let's set the key equal to age. And I will not reverse it. We can keep it as it is. But let's change for i in students to sorted students. And that's how to use the sorted function to sort an iterable, including a list. Well, all right, everyone. That's how to sort iterables in Python. If you would like a copy of all this code, I will post all of this to the comment section down below. But yeah, that's a basic way to sort iterables in Python. Hey you, yeah I'm talking to you. If you learned something new, then help me help you in three easy steps by smashing that like button, drop a comment down below, and subscribe if you'd like to become a fellow bro.